guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I wanted to talk about the Rolex Submariner. But not just the Rolex Submariner, I want to tell you seven watches which are higher end and cheaper than the king of watches, the Rolex Submariner. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check, Gerard Perigo Laureato. Another watch that is higher end and cheaper, but that's just too easy. It didn't make the list. Also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. Bunch of new watches in stock. Rolex Day Date President. We actually just got in a very high end and very rare Alt Lance, which is maybe 70% off retail, even less. Go check it out. Brand new, along with a bunch of other goodies at DelrayWatch.com, a link in the description below. So let me preface this video by saying, I'm not a Rolex hater. I own two Rolexes, I love them. I own a Submariner. The Submariner is ubiqui the ubiquitous luxury watch. It's the iconic luxury watch. It's probably the one watch everybody thinks of when they think of a luxury watch. That being said, when a brand or an icon is uh, so in demand, prices go up and they don't always offer the best value. Now, a new Rolex's retail price is $85.50, but a more realistic price is about $10,500 if you look at the secondary market for a brand new model. Now, don't get this mixed up, guys. I'm not hating on the Submariner. As I said, I love it. It's a fantastic watch. It is probably a better everyday watch, a, a, a more... Uh, how shall we say, versatile watch than anything on my list. But that being said, if you have a budget of 10500 or under, that isn't to say you can't get a higher-end piece of horology than a Rolex Submariner, because unfortunately, it was actually quite easy for me to come up with these. And I'm going to talk about them today, and I'd love your opinion. Now, of course, as is tradition, this list is in no particular order. But let's get started. The first one I wrote down is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, either the Bathyscaphe or the normal one. Bathyscaphe can be had for about $7,000, $7,500 pre-owned. The normal one, uh, you know, a little bit more than that. What can we say? Also a dive watch. An in-house, well, it's a, it's a Frederic Piguet movement, but Swatch Group bought Frederic Piguet, renamed it to Manufacture Blancpain, so now it's an in-house manufacturer Blancpain movement. An in-house movement with higher end decoration, a better case finishing. The normal 50 Fathom is a sapphire bezel. The Bathyscaphe has a ceramic bezel. It's technically a higher end brand with higher end price points. And one could even argue it is the original dive watch. However, it, you know, what I can tell you, whether you like it or not, the finishing is higher end. Uh, I would say the Rolex is definitely more durable, but the attention to detail is definitely there on the Blancpain, and it is cheaper than the Rolex. Next is a very high-end watch for significantly less than the Rolex. An H. Moser Pioneer can be had pre-owned easily under $10,000. Here we have H. Moser, a brand that makes less than 2,000 watches a year, a brand that I personally own and that my partner John just picked up for himself as well. One of the highest end brands in horology. They are 100% in-house. They even make their own hair springs. They make uh, all their parts, and not to mention, they also make parts for other brands. Here we have a watch, which is much higher end finish than Rolex. There's some hand finishing on the movement. It's got... Uh, the modular hairspring and escapement, you know, sapphire crystal, just like the Rolex, stainless steel, just like the Rolex. Yes, this does look better on the rubber, but it does have a bracelet option as well. And, you know, to the layman, H. Moser is significantly less prestigious than Rolex because no one knows what H. Moser is. But to the watch collector, H. Moser is some serious high horology. And definitely higher end than a Rolex. Once again, you may not like it more than a Rolex. That's totally fine. But the Pioneer, if you have that money, is definitely one that should be considered. 
Next, and probably one of the highest end watchers on this list, but one of the most uh, controversial and polarizing in style, we have the Roger Dubuis Easy Diver. Roger Dubuis, also a very small brand, but owned by Richemont, probably less than a thousand watches a year. These watches have Geneva seal movements. Uh, that's very rare. Only the highest level of hand finishing, anglage, perlage, uh, you know, polished screws, all of that. Now, yes, their styling is rather extreme. And I don't blame you for not liking Roger Dubuis. I don't blame you at all. But this is not only in another league than a Rolex, but several leagues above a Rolex for the price point. You can get these for five to six, you know, even $7,000, almost half the price. As I said, not everybody's taste, and if you don't like it, don't buy it. But the, the luxury that is offered on display, significantly higher round than a Rolex. Now we have a watch that personally I find hideous, but is extremely well made. The Glasuta Sport Evolution. Small brand from Germany, owned by Swatch Group. They probably make less than 10,000 watches a year, 10 to 20,000. Stainless steel, in-house movement just like the Rolex. Bigger complication because as the big date, they invented the slide lock clasp. And once again, here we have movement and case finishing. The Rolex 904L steel, you know, X very well made cases, but very simple. They don't they no longer even have the chamfers. Whereas the Glasute uses a mixture of finishes and a movement that honestly is much better to look at than the Rolex. I don't love the watch, I don't like the way it looks, but what can we say? You know, if you study it under a loop, there's no discussion. Of course, Vacheron Constantin overseas, maybe not this generation, but the last generation. These can be picked up for $10,000, under $10,000 for the time-only version. A Holy Trinity brand. Yes, this one does not have the in-house movement, I believe. I believe it is a JLC base. Um, but, you know, uh, just look at the details. Look at the Maltese cross bracelet. Look at the dial. Uh, just the name Vacheron Constantin. I mean, that is higher end than... Ro I mean, I understand if you don't know Moser or Roger Dubuis, but Vacheron Constantin, if you know even a little bit about watches, you know is a higher end brand than Rolex. It's part of that Gerald Genta kind of look, uh, you know, the Nautilus, the Aquanaut. Even though it wasn't designed by Gerald Genta, I believe it was Jörg Heisek who did the overseas. However, one cannot argue that it is not a very high end watch. Now we have... One of Vacheron's biggest competitors, the Breguet Marine, big date. Also with a bracelet or strap option. Manufacture Blanc Palm movement, just like the 50 Fathoms with different decorations. Breguet, the inventor of the Turbion. A brand with much higher price points than Rolex, yet pre-owned, these can be had for about $7,000. Coin-edged finished case, uh, perlage movements, barley corn dial, Guys, it is a higher-end watch. And, you know, if you want something different in Breguet, the last one on this list is the Breguet Type 20. This one even features a complication, a flyback chronograph, Frédéric Piguet flyback chronograph, date or no date. Aviation style also has a bracelet or a strap option. A little on the smaller side of 39 millimeters, but this is a very, very high-end watch, and once again, about half the price of the Rolex. Now, guys, I'm aware none of these are pure dive watches apart from the 50 Fathoms. And, you know, you know people could argue the Roger Dubuis might be there and the Sport Evolution. But these are everyday watches that I wanted to show you. Watches that are not too fragile to wear every day that are significantly less expensive. I mean, yes, if you're going to go diving, Rolex is fantastic. I mean, Rolex is fantastic anyway. But the dive style is just a great everyday style. You can wear a Breguet Type 20 every day. You certainly can. Anyway, this is just to show you guys that as much as I love Rolex and people love Rolex, they're far from the highest end. I mean, in terms of luxury watches, they're basically right in the middle of the road. And if you aspire to a Rolex, nothing wrong with that. I want to own a few more, I own them now. But please don't let it stop you 
from discovering what else is on the market. Horology, watches, watch collecting, does not stop, does not stop with Rolex, and you're doing yourself nothing but a disservice if all you'll consider is a Rolex. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below, and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you agreed with me, I, it really helps me out, and let me know in the comment section what you think. Guys, thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.